My name is Mike Sadler, and I've spent my life with cars. Whether it's sand dunes and drag strips, museums, car shows, even the backyard garage, I'm always on the lookout for speed and shine. Hey, welcome back to Speed and Shine. It's a new year and a new season, but a whole bunch of old problems. In this episode, we're gonna head out and visit with Chuck at Avenue Auto, and we're gonna look at a very unique Jeep. But first, usually this time of year, we're getting ready to see the Detroit International Auto Show, but it already happened. We went and visited it, and we checked out some new cars, old cars, and we saw some new technology. Check it out. Welcome to Speed and Shine. We're in Detroit today to attend the North American Auto Show on a bright sunny day. It's the first time it's ever been held in the summer. We have events inside and we have outside. Let's go check them out. Robert, um, I was drawn over here. It's like uh, in the candy store. What sure. do we got going on? Well, um, this is our 10th year at the uh, Detroit Auto Show. Uh, you know, when it was Cobo Hall, now it's Huntington. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, the owner is Michael Kassab of the Auto Group. Okay. Um, he started when he was 13 years old detailing cars and he grew up to do this. He's 30 now. Yeah, he's done a great job now. Uh -huh. Let's talk about this one real quick. This is our uh, our golf edition, sort of speak. You know, yeah. it started out as a just your 992 Turbo Blue. Uh, then we did the plaid interior. Then you got the two tone um, powder coated with yeah. you know gloss black, the satin front finish, and then we did the clear lens. The we painted the mirrors and we did the um, the graphics. Yeah, the golf livery colors, and mm -hmm. you match the calipers to that orange. Absolutely, that's actually from factory. And the seats, no, that any that is not stock. What did you do there? No, that's ordered. Actually, that's from uh, that material is actually from Porsche. Wow. Actually, and they also we also have the orange and blue. So if he if our client decides to change the to an orange and blue, we can. That's fantastic. All Absolutely. Right. And then this car over here. Um, a McLaren. Yeah, this was special ordered uh, for a uh, from one of uh, Mr. Kassab's uh, high-end clients. Yeah. Uh, we ordered it for uh, Michael ordered it for him. It's a 765 McLaren LT. Wow, it is beautiful. I would just love. I, I, I like detailing and cleaning cars. I would sure. just love to clean one of these ones, right? Oh, they're fun. I mean, it's it's therapeutic for me uh, detailing vehicles. Is there a specific name for this color? Do you know what that is? I do not. I know. I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, I do not. But you know, um, yeah, I know. If Michael was here, he'll, he'll tell you exactly because he's the one that spec the car out. It's got almost looks like grabber blue calipers on there. Absolutely. It is a fantastic car. Did you get to drive this? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I would not want to drive. Uh, you know, a high seven figure, uh, six figure car. No, why not? <laughs> Why not? It's got a full row cage. You just yeah, don't sure. want to hurt it, right? <laughs> this is the AMG GTR. Wow. You know, it's a really fun car to draw. This is a factory green color. So you have driven this one? Oh, yeah. I had um, I had a 16 and a 17. Can I touch that? Sure, absolutely. It, it, it's a wrap, isn't it? No, that's a factory color from Mercedes. Really? It, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's stunning because it's not exactly... <laughs> Real shiny, but it's still yeah. It's that satin, uh, satin uh, look, and a lot of people mistake it for a wrap, but it's not. Yeah, and it's got yellow again, different color. Yeah, calipers, this is everything. Yellow, yeah, everything you see here is all from factory. This is a factory the way it came. Absolutely. And so people contact you when you're looking for a specific car. Absolutely, we do. Um, we are kind of a boutique store, so we do sales and service and custom vehicles. Uh, so we do it all. 
What a great job you It's have. a fun job, actually. I bet. All it's right. a great job. Altel Energy, what do you do? Well, I think the answer to that question is what do we not do? Mm. Uh, so, Autel stands for Automotive Intelligence. So, historically, we've delivered products to the tools market for automotive, aftermarket tools market. About 18 months ago, we jumped into the EV space, okay. developing, designing, and delivering EV charging products. Uh, we got our start in the Asia market about 18 months ago moved over to the European market about six months ago and officially launched here in the U.S. Wednesday, unofficially, July 1 of this year. So in North America, we're a fairly new product in the EV space, but a long-standing mature product and company in the diagnostic tools space. Cool. And, and you handled residential, commercial, both? Yeah, the answer to that is both. So we've got products that are designed for both the residential space as well as a host of products for the commercial space. And it's charging stuff, uh, you know, for any car that's electric. Yeah, absolutely. We've got products that are standardized for North American and uh, European models, as well as all of our products with an adapter can support the Tesla products as well. Okay. Let's look at the commercial stuff. So this model is called the AC floor standing, but you know, you actually can install this on the wall as well. So it comes oh. in a pedestal offering as well as a wall mountable. It comes with cable weighted cable retraction and the intent of this product is an AC unit meaning it's level two okay. and for there's many different use cases but it's going to be a situation where you have a little higher dwell time a little longer time to charge your vehicle right now we're delivering 19.2 kW or kilowatts per cable wow. maximum on an 80 amp service uh, the really neat thing about this product is it's the only product in the industry that uh, delivers twin 19.2 AC level two services. So you can charge both cars? Both cars at once, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now some people ask, can I, if I just use one, is it 38? The answer is no. Each one of them tops out at 19.2. Where we see this application in situations like dealerships, for example, or maybe in front of the gym or Whole Foods or something like that, from a use case perspective, where your client or your charging individual has a little longer time. They don't need to be jumping back on the road in 10 or 15 minutes but they'll be there for a couple of hours. So sure. they'll be able to get a reasonable amount of throughput in that time. The other nice part about this unit and all of our units is that they have an interactive touch screen. So in addition to charging, you can manage content on there, both advertising as well as you wanted to do promotions, public service announcements, etc. All those functionalities are built into our units and allow the end user, the owner of the station to create, modify, and deliver whatever user experience they want through that content portal. So they wouldn't have to necessarily set this up to charge that person a, a cost for doing charging, could they? That's correct. Um, we really empower the users to do whatever they want with respect to the pricing model. But so, for example, on here, we've just loaded some, uh, some scenario uh, pricing tiers. Example, on this one, we've got a graduated tier depending on what your overall cost for electricity is. So, right. for example, when it's non-peak, we're charging one rate. Then during the peak periods of the day, we're charging another rate structure, and then when it jumps to off-peak. So you can really develop your pricing schema to whatever your intended output is, or if your profit motive, or what the design and desired uh, experience that you're looking to deliver. We see a lot of individuals actually just using these to attract customers rather than trying to earn revenue. But it's really up to the individual station owner what they want to do with the product in the field. This is what we call DC Fast Wall Box. So the design of this is uh, when you want DC fast, but you don't have a lot of room to install it, and you want reasonably high throughput. So this unit can deliver 40 kW to a single cable, or 20 times two. Wow. The nice thing about that is the peak output is twice as fast as that AC unit. 
And again, the difference between these two products from an overall design and technology is this is DC or direct current, where that is AC. So traditionally in our homes, we have AC current, but all of our EV products run on DC or direct current. This is more efficient because it runs DC from the unit to the battery, bypasses the onboard rectifier, which you would need to translate the AC to DC to fill the, the battery. So this is much more efficient. Also, you have a larger touch screen for content management. Unlike anything else in the industry, we provide an opportunity to have two CCS1 cords on it so that you can charge two cars simultaneously. Other peers in the industry have a similar unit, however, it only delivers 24 max and you can only get one CCS1 or in one CHAdeMO. All the North American cars and the Europeans have standardized on the CCS1, so we think this product is going to be a very attractive one in the market. In addition to that, you see on here it can be enabled for Card? multiple different payment methods. We've right. got the embedded Stripe uh, program into our cloud services, which is app-driven. All the transactions are processed by AWS or Amazon Web Services, so you can, you can be confident that your transactions are protected. So if you're comfortable doing an Amazon transaction, you can be comfortable doing a transaction for EV charging on Autel's cloud platform. All right, so what we're representing here is our new flagship product. We call it DC Fast High Power ADV. ADV stands for advertisement, but really what we feel okay. is we provided a portal to really support almost anything from a content perspective. So there are infinite use cases of how you would leverage this in a commercial environment. 55 inch screen, touch screen, 4K high resolution. In addition to that, we've got the EV charging component of the unit, which is, we call it a power cabinet dispenser model. The, the intention of that is you can bury that power cabinet back behind the bushes and only put these sleek, aesthetically pe pleasing dispensers out in the public facing purview. Okay. In addition to that, this unit is scalable from 80 to 480 kW of overall output. One power cabinet can have one, two, three, or four dispensers, depending on what your intended use case is. And you can additionally install additional cabinets and additional dispensers. Right now we've got it set up where that power cabinet is delivering to both of these dispensers. So you'd have 120 times four from okay. an output perspective. If we had it just with two dispensers, it would be optimized and maximized at 240 kW. Okay. In addition to it being on this side, it's a twin display. So a use case, for example, at uh, like a shopping mall or strip mall, where you've got one user interface on this side, you might want to manage and deliver a different content experience for the foot traffic that are seeing the opposite side sure. of the charger. Sure. So all of this is wrapped around our cloud service, which uh, from a user perspective, the browser version of this, you can manage your own content, you can upload it, um, you know, movies, promotions, whatever you want, we provide that portal for you to do it from a self-service perspective. So what we have here is our Maxi Charger Residential. So this is the product that we've designed to be implemented into the residential space. Okay. We're not saying you can't purchase a commercial charger, but this unit right now sells for, on the 40 amp version of this, $559, $599 for the 50 amp version of this. This is level two, so this is on a 208, 240 electrical service. Mm -hmm can optimally deliver up to 12 kW to the port. Okay. Um, that's on a 50 amp electrical service. So we see this unit being uh, implemented across the board in residential, multifamily, those types of environments. The only difference between this product and all the other commercial products, two things really. One, it doesn't have an interactive touch screen because we figure you don't probably need that if you got it in your home. You're probably not going to advertise right. or deliver messaging to yourself. Right. Um, and in addition to that, this cannot be monetized, meaning you cannot in inject a pricing structure and charge people uh, for, for the utilization of the charger. Okay. This is the V2X or vehicle to grid char bi-directional charger that we've developed. So not only, oh, okay. not only is this unit able to charge your car on a daily basis in the event that you would have a power loss or a utility failure, you'd be able to hit a button on here, activate an automatic transfer switch between the utility service in your home and start utilizing the stored energy that you have in your EV in the garage. That's so that's brilliant. <laughs> we feel like the use case is very strong. Yeah. Agreed. 
uh, this cost process cost considerably more than the other? So we're still in the final stages of developing the price point, but what we're seeing in this price come in as probably sub 6K MSRP. But really what you're getting for this product is three products in one. So no longer do you need your diesel generator and your on-site battery storage for resiliency and, and DR, and an additional charger, you get all three of those products rolled into this one box. Amazing. So we feel like this is going to be a very attractive investment for a lot of individuals that are EV drivers and want to have a utility backup strategy for their home. great cars here. Why they're on display? What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So each one of these cars in particular is actually a part of the M1 concourse and upcoming events such as American Speed Festival. So we're happy here to showcase it off, give you a little preview of what's to come. Wow. So you're going to have, these cars are going to be out on the track in a couple weeks? That's correct. Racing. Yeah. Somebody's going to take this million and a half dollar Ford GT out there. Are they going to run against these other cars? Not or are there classes? Yeah, they're different classes. Um, we're going to see all different varieties all in course and, you know, cars you normally wouldn't see. Wow, that's incredible. And so that Players LTD, is that a former IndyCar? Yeah, it actually is. The original. And they're going to take that out there. Wow. And the same with the, uh, the red car over there. That's the plan. Cars you never see on track, they're like M1 Concourse and American Speed Fest. So how do they get tickets for that? What are they? Yeah, absolutely. We can go directly to our site, actually, M1Concourse.com, link for American Speed Festival. Purchase tickets right online through Eventbrite. And I've been to the Cars and Coffee there before. How often do you have those? Yes, once every month, actually. Um, as long as the weather cooperates, um, first Saturday of every month, we have, on average, I mean, over 2,000 cars. So. I know, Thanks I thought, I'm going to get there. I said 7 a.m. should be early enough. <laughs> I was completely wrong. I barely made it inside the track to park. Yeah, absolutely. It is um, a big event. But we're always welcome to have more people. You know, the more the merrier, and we like to keep it that way, so. All right, well, thank you. Absolutely, thank you, Mike. Yeah. A lot of vehicles here, concept yep. and otherwise. This is the wildest. What am I looking um, at? First of all, thank you for saying that. This was, was our intention, and this is the reaction that we have from the audience. It is amazing. It looks like um, the drone my camera guy flies for our show. Yeah, uh, well, it's based on a drone. Mm -hmm. So uh, the evolution of those, uh, those devices and those vehicles came from drone technology. Uh, the convergence of technologies for batteries, motors, and drone flight control system, together with uh, uh, the ability to produce such a thing in an automotive grade uh, production methods and materials, uh, brought to life what you see here, basically. Beautiful. Thank you. And how far is it from its concept, or is it going into production? Uh, this one is the pretty one. We have another one, which is the flying one. Uh, we are doing some. We're conducting some flight control testing, uh, flight testing in in Israel currently. So we, are, we have flown, uh, we have hovered, tethered. We have started now uh, flying around. Uh, we're opening the envelope, full envelope, until the end of the year. Uh, and we're going into production early 24. It's amazing. It's, it's just so awesome to look at. Now, do you have stuff out there on YouTube or the website that people can go yeah, and look so at? Yeah, so our website is airev.aero, A-E-R-O, 
Uh, we have lots of materials on Instagram and social media. We're trying to be very active. Uh, we have sold, I, t as of yesterday, it was 226 units. Currently, I think we're over 250 because there is a lot of traction here. Yeah. And we, are, we maintain very close contact with uh, viewers and, and followers and so forth. What would a person need to, if they bought one of these, what would they need to use it, fly it? A, a license, air, you know, air, a pilot's license? Yeah, so first of all, when you drive a car, you have a driver's license, right? Yeah. When you drive a, something that goes into air, you have a pilot license. Uh, you will need something which is in the level of a sports pilot. Mm. Sports pilot is 15 to 20 hours of practice, not so much, not in terms of uh, duration or cost. Uh, the skill set that is required with our, with our aircraft is much reduced than any aerial platform that you can find. Okay, so you simplified it. Yes, it's, it's, first of all it's computerized and co uh, computer controlled. So it is a flight control system. Uh, we, fly, we call it a fly by intent. Okay. Uh, there is a very highly, uh, so highly sophisticated stabilization system which is very distributed, so very redundant and very robust. Uh, so you're flying basically in an envelope of software, which mm -hmm. enables you to translate your desires to maneuvers, let's say. Really? Uh, wow. So you do with the stick what you want the thing to do, and it calculates whatever is needed and compensates for every, any, anything that you mustn't do or shouldn't do. It flies Keeps you out of trouble. Like a nanny. Just make sure you don't get um, in trouble? I, I'd prefer, uh, let's say, a companion Schumacher. Let's okay. Say. Okay, yeah. a nanny is, let's... Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's gas and electric? No, it's only electric, it's only purely electric. electric. It has four batteries. Uh, you can charge it in your, uh, the socket that you use for your EV. Uh, charging is six to eight hours at home or up to uh, an hour in a supercharger. Uh, rather fast, goes to, uh, up to 100 miles, uh, close to an hour of endurance. Uh, not a very long range, but starts to be practical and much fun. And your primary customer in the end, I mean, it'll be sport pilots like you're saying now. In, in the end, you think this will be a commuter in some locations or? Um, when you buy a car, you don't have a use case. You just want to go places, right? This, right. Is our, this is our desire. We would like to have people using it for whatever they need, wherever they need, and where it's possible, of course. So you do need the space to land it at home. Uh, and you do have to need to have a place to go to. So if you walk, go in the city, you have to go to the outskirts of the city and take an Uber, for example, or a bird. Sure, sure. Uh, if you want to go on a picnic or, or fly fishing, whatever you want. It's amazing, and good luck. Thank you, thank Thanks you very much. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you. Yep. Chuck, it's winter out here, as you can see, but yeah. you got a great vehicle for someone uh, looking for something to keep them from getting stranded, the Jeep? Yeah, we do, yeah, the Jeeps, the Wranglers. Uh, well, if you've ever had one, a lot of people that have Wranglers always drive a Wrangler, so. I grew up, I was a, a Jeep family. We had a Jeep Commando as a kid, never left us stranded, so this would be a great buy for somebody. Yeah, and it's the four-door if you got a family, which is nice. Yeah, and let's look at the inside here. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Something's wrong, Chuck. There's something missing here. Yeah, I think the person that's going to buy this is probably going to deliver some mail. Yeah, it's a, right hand drive. Yeah. So how did this get in the country, I wonder? <laughs> well, it took a while to get here now, but we finally, um, we were trying to buy it for a couple weeks and that. Like I say, it's a little unusual um, to find them in a, a Wrangler, a, a mail type vehicle, I guess you'd say. Sure. So four wheel drive, you know, if you got a route, route I guess, out in the country, it'd be good, you know, for something oh, like that. It'd be a perfect vehicle if you're delivering 
mail, right. mail route, or, or even the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. So what's it got under the hood? Uh, they're all six cylinders. That's six cylinder? Yep. Was this an automatic? Yes. Yes. Yep. There we go. Oh, it's clean under there. Yeah, and they run until we get halfway decent gas mileage, but still got plenty of power. Yeah, yeah. Air conditioning? Yep, power locks, power windows, uh, tilt crews. And then again, like you say, the right-hand drive is always a plus. <laughs> right, uh, If right. you're a mail carrier, that is. Well, I think it would be fun just to drive around, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's a little unusual. I, I took drove it the other day that down to get some gas in it. It was very, very different. Yeah. Very different. And it's got good tires on it. Yeah, we, uh, everything goes through service here. Everything's checked out. And it looks like that, that one roof panel might even come out for the summer. This one here, right? Yeah, you can kind of make it a convertible if you want to take the top off in the summertime, which would be, which is nice. And the four doors, like you said, it's pretty clean inside. Got a little space in the back, has a roll bar. Do they all come with roll bars like that? Usually. I think in this package they do. Yeah. I don't know if all of them you know, do as far as that goes, but I think in the sport package they do. So if anyone's interested in this Jeep, uh, they give you a call, check you out online? Yeah, online or give us a call. Most people know we're here, we've been here a long time, family owned and operated, so. And I saw when I was checking out your website and what you had, uh, your inventory, I saw you can apply for credit online too. Yep, yep, some people do. Yep, and or they'll give us a call or do like a half an application, then we'll get back with them either that day or the next day. All right. And we can get pretty much anybody financed too, as far as that goes, as long as they're working. Oh, so, really? That's yep. great. Yep. All right. And you do service here? Yep. We got our own garage. Yep. We got four mechanics back there. Um, they do very good work on little, they stay fairly busy back there, but we try to squeeze them in and get them out here as quickly as we can. So. And if someone's interested in a car, could you put it on the lift for them and let them look underneath? Oh, yeah, needs? certainly. Or we tell them if they want to get, a lot of people got their own mechanics, they want to take it out for the day. Mm -hmm. We just got to, we don't let them go overnight because our plates aren't. Um, our insurance stops after business hours. Okay. So, but if they want to pick it up in the morning, take it to their own shop, have a mechanic, yeah, it happens a lot, oh, so. Great. Well, this is where you come. It may be cold outside, but the deals are hot here at Avenue Auto. Looks like some more grinding. Wasn't that a great episode? And whether you like it or not, there was a whole lot of electric vehicles there. If you'd like to see more, check out our YouTube channel, Speed and Shine TV, and look for future episodes. We're gonna go to a lot of great places and attend some fun events. Until next time. And if you'd like to see more, check us out on our YouTube page, Speed and Shine TV. Nope, it's a channel, not a page, damn it. <laughs> All right, but I'm on the right. You're on the right path, just a little quicker and a little smoother. Quicker and smoother. That's what she said. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say.